A very warm welcome to, uh, to this, our Eucharist on the Sunday following Christmas, St. Stephen's Day. We are a small, uh, a small uh, group this morning, not, in, not really surprising, uh, given that this is only one day after Christmas. But it's good to be get together this morning and to be worshipping. We start as we sing our opening hymn, hymn number four, A Great and Mighty Wonder. in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We join together in the words of the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us hear our Lord's blessing on those who follow him. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. As Stephen rebuked God's people for not listening to the word of God, 
Let us confess our stubbornness and sin, which resist the Holy Spirit. We pray together. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through wickedness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. You call us to listen to your voice. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You call us to flee from idolatry. Christ, have mercy. You ask us to forgive our persecutors. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The God of love and power, forgive you and free you from your sins. He'll strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. uncircumcised in heart and ears. You are forever opposing the Holy Spirit, just as your ancestors used to do. Which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They killed those who foretold the coming of the righteous one, and now you have become his betrayer and murderers. You are the ones that received the law as ordained by angels, and yet you have not kept it. 
When they heard these things, they became enraged and ground their teeth at Stephen. But filled with the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of the young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 2, verses 16 to 20. Yet we know that a person is justified not by the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. And we have come to believe in Christ Jesus, so that we might be justified by faith in Christ, and not by doing the works of the law, because no one will be justified by the works of the law. But if in our effort to be justified in Christ, we ourselves have been found to be sinners, is Christ then a servant of sin? Certainly not. But if I build up again the very things that I once tore down, then I demonstrate that I am a transgressor. For through the law I died to the law, so that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. gradual hymn is hymn 242, Good King Wenceslas Looked At. <laughs>
Alleluia, alleluia. I have called you friends, says the Lord, for all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. Alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. Alleluia. Hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and father a ch his child, and children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you. And so may I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. My sermons over the Christmas period this year have focused on new things and the new ways of doing things. Of course, I spoke about how God is doing a new thing in coming to earth in human form for our salvation. But I've also spoken about a Christmas carol and the subsequent film Scrooge and how that was Charles Dickens way of telling a new story or a new way of telling the story of redemption. Yesterday I spoke about the film A Wonderful Life. This was an attempt to tell, inspired by Charles Dickens um, Christmas Carol, but it was a way to tell the story in a new way that appealed to the American market. Well, today we celebrate the life and martyrdom of St. Stephen. And again, we have another new thing happening, the first time something happened. And that's because Stephen is known as the proto-martyr, or if you prefer, the first Christian martyr. So I thought it might be a good idea this morning to remind ourselves of the story of Stephen, who he was, how he became the first Christian martyr. Martyr, a word which means witness. So perhaps as we follow Stephen's story, we should remember that he was the first Christian who's witnessing to Christ as the way, the truth, and the life brought about his death. In this case, not on a cross, but under a hail of stones and rocks. And as we follow Stephen's story, let's try and see what there is in it for us today. Are there things about the early church that we can learn from? Does it say anything about how we use our gifts in ministry in this place and in this time? And does it lead us to question anything about what we believe? And let's listen for the echoes of Jesus' own story in the life of the Christian church. In that life, in the Christian church, the followers of Jesus would have attended the temple. They're taught by the apostles to break bread and to pray together. Those who own property and possessions sell what they have and everything is held for the good of all people according to their need. But it isn't too long before a dispute arises over the distribution of food. There were two groups or two main groups of Jews in Jerusalem at the time. First, there were the Palestinian Jews, those who were born in Palestine those who spoke Aramaic. The second group were known as the Hellenists. They spoke Greek as their first or possibly second language, and they came from the countries that surrounded Palestine. In other words, they were immigrants. It seems that the Hellenist widows 
were not being given a fair share of the food when it was distributed. Representatives of the Hellenists go to the apostles and tell them about this in order for it to be put right. The apostles say that they mustn't be distracted from their work of teaching, preaching and praying and they suggest that the Hellenists appoint from among themselves seven men full of the Holy Spirit, the full of wisdom also, to go and sort this out and ensure that the food is distributed fairly and equally. And this is when we meet Stephen for the first time. He and Philip are two of the seven. We don't actually hear very much about the other five other than simply their names. And we hear no more about the dispute over the distribution of food. The story of Acts <clears throat> continues with Stephen's ministry. We're told that he is full of grace and power, that he performs great signs and wonders. He's also an evangelist, and unlike most of the apostles, he travels outside the area of the temple and Jerusalem. He goes out teaching and preaching in synagogues where the Jews are Greeks. Where, where the, sorry, where the Jews are Greek speaking. And he speaks with power and authority that we are told cannot be denied. The people of these synagogues take against Stephen and accuse him of blasphemy. They take him before the Sanhedrin in Jerusalem and they set up false witnesses who claim that Stephen has said that Jesus will destroy the temple and do away with the law of Moses, not what Jesus had said at all. Now Jesus remained silent when charges were brought against him. But Stephen launches into a long and powerful speech, not in his defence as we might expect, but as it turns out accusing the people of Israel of idolatry and blasphemy themselves. The speech actually goes on for 53 verses in Acts 7. But it's a really good read, it's well worth reading. And I can recommend that there's a book um, written by Tom Wright to use as a guide through that. Uh, the book's called Acts for Everyone. The themes of Stephen's speech, using the stories of Abraham, Jacob, Joseph and Moses, are basically that the people of Israel have always been disobedient to God, that they've worshipped idols and built shrines to them, that they haven't kept the law of Moses, that they have always rejected and persecuted leaders and prophets who had been chosen by God to save his people. And he finishes all this off by calling them stiff-necked, inflexible people who have now done the same as their ancestors did and killed the Messiah. The speech is inflammatory and it enrages the Sanhedrin and others who are listening and this is the point at which our reading that Marika brought us this morning comes in. Stephen looks up and declares that he can see the heavens opened and Jesus, the Son of Man, standing at God's right hand. And that is the last straw. There's an uproar. Stephen's dragged off, probably thrown into a pit and stoned to death. A very cruel punishment and a terrible way to die. Once again, Stephen follows the way of Jesus, though. He commends his spirit to the Lord, just as Jesus did on the cross. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. In Stephen's case, Lord, into, my, into your hands I commend my spirit. And remarkably, he too forgives his tormentors. Lord, do not hold this sin against them, as Jesus did. And then he dies. This is the story of Stephen. But it holds also the seeds of at least two other stories which are about to begin. First of all, this triggers a fierce persecution of the followers of Jesus, which results in arrests and imprisonment for many. It also sends the followers of Jesus out of Jerusalem to some far off places where they preach and teach the good news so that the church begins and spreads. Secondly, there's a young man in our reading called Saul who guards the coats of the people throwing stones and who appears to approve of the execution. As we know, Saul 
becomes a particularly ferocious persecutor of Christians. That is, until he travels along the Damascus Road. He then becomes Paul and takes the gospel far and wide. And we heard that in the reading that Wendy brought us from Galatians this morning. He goes out preaching not just to Jews, but also to Gentiles. Perhaps it was Stephen. Perhaps it was Stephen. His assurance of faith, his words, his vision, and his willingness to forgive his enemies, who sparked off in Saul the thought that maybe, just maybe, Jesus was in fact the way, the truth, and the life. Today, Stephen finishes my Christmas series of sermons on God doing new things, and of other people like Charles Dickens and Philip van, de so van Doren Sems, who wrote the, uh, the book A Gift, which led to the film A Wonderful Life. This finishes that series of people trying to spread God's message of redemption in new ways. So I guess now as we look to 2022, it's our turn to ask how we can do the same. How we can take God's message of love for all, his promise of redemption, the hope of everlasting life out to our communities in new ways that talk to people and grab their attention as did Charles Dickens' books, as did the films, as did Stephen. Amen. And so I now invite you to stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So I now invite you to sit or kneel for our prayers of intercession. And Jill is going to lead us in our prayers this morning. Let us pray. As we celebrate Jesus being born amongst us, let us pray in the presence of God. Lord, give joy to the world, joy in our hearts, joy in our homes. Let the joy of God be known amongst us. For your love revealed it in your manger birth, man, manger birth. we join with the shepherds to glorify and praise you through him who came to live amongst us. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
Let us pray that the church may truly be the body of Christ in loving servanthood, humility and availability that as pastors and teachers, prophets and evangelists, givers, carers and listeners, the old people of God may make, may make Christ known. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray that every, every family may be blessed and guided through all the troubles and chances of life, supporting one another in love and forgiving one another in every day that there may, there may be food and shelter, enough for each person on this earth, comfort and practic practical help to all in need and peace of mind for the warriors. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray, Lord, we greatly rejoice in your presence amongst us. We come to bow with the shepherds, to kneel with the wise men, to adore with Joseph, to hold you in our hearts with Mary. Let your church proclaim your glory and your love. We pray for pastors and shepherds of your flock, for all who go out on a mission, for all who are involved in outreach. May we reveal you as the light to lighten all peoples. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, let us, let us pray, Lord, we remember with sadness the divisions of the world, a world not at peace, where people misused and often scorned. We remember the places of war and violence, especially all the people and children in Afghanistan who are so short of food, water and medical treatment. We pray for them all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for all on our prayer list and all who are seriously ill and need carers. We pray for all who are on the road to recovery. We remember the souls of Mr. John Clark, Mr. John Richardson, Archbishop Tutu, and all, and all of the souls of the faithful departed. We pray that for those who mourn their loss, may they rest in peace and in rise in glory. glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for all the NHS staff, as they are working a lot harder again, especially with the new variant that has become amongst us. Dear Lord, give them love, give them your love and strength to carry on with the good work. We pray for all emergency services who are always there when we need them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our, our Saviour, Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Would you please stand as we prepare to share the peace. May the God of peace sanctify you. May he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before him at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Now as I look around, because I'm talking about uh, doing a new thing, as I have been all over Christmas, I think everybody apart from Richard will have seen this. So, do you watch Strictly, Richard? No. Okay. Um, Rose, who's been on Strictly, is a profoundly deaf uh, actress, and everyone's getting really interested in BSL, so am I. So, so I've been teaching people how to do Peace Be With You in British Sign Language. So, whereas we can't shake hands or hug or kiss or whatever, no. we, we can do this. So, it's... Fingers up! No, fingers up. If your fingers are down, it's twins. So it's, it's those. So two like then. That, that's peace. Be with. This way, with your hands crossed. This way. Yeah, that's it. Then you. So let us offer one another a sign of peace. 
peace be with you. Our offertory hymn is in two hundred and forty. Good Christians all rejoice. Two hundred and forty.
us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ.
Merciful Lord, we thank you for the signs of your mercy revealed in the birth and death. Save us by the coming of your Son and give us joy in honouring Stephen, first martyr of the new Israel, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray together. You have opened the script to us the scriptures, O Christ, and you have made yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Abide with us, we pray, that blessed by your royal presence, we may walk with you all the days of our life, and at its end behold you in the glory of the eternal Trinity, one God, now and forever. Amen. Would you please stand for the blessing? The Lord be with you. And also with you. God give you grace to be faithful witnesses, to see heaven opened, and the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn is hymn 588, See Amid the Winter's Snow.
Satan had, did great wonders and signs among the people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So go in peace, to love and serve them. In the name of Christ. Amen.